And I do have a sound therapy practice here in, in Portsmouth. I actually, I, I tend for myself to use the term therapy, not healing. Um, there's two types of sound people. There's sound healers and sound therapists. And um, I come from more of a musical background. And you'll find that most of the people that lean into sound therapy tend to be more musical background people. And not that one is better than the other, but there's some distinctions that I'll talk about with, with this group tonight, especially because you're wanting to find out more about vibration. Um, I've done a lot of sound healing workshops with uh, with the uh, with sound healers using bowls, uh, percussion. There tends to be less of a um, uh, an adherence to uh, music theory when you get into sound healing. Uh, whatever is struck and played tends to be okay. Uh, I follow more of a, um, a mindset that tune and key tends to be important. And I'll explain why as I start to explain a little bit more about my, my work. So sound therapist, not sound healer. And uh, I also don't use the word healing because I don't consider myself a healer. Uh, right off the bat, I don't think that this is a miraculous healing instrument. And I don't think that I'm a healer. If people heal themselves. And the only thing that I do and the didgeridoo does is to facilitate or help people unlock their inner healing. So I like to make that distinction also when my... my uh, work and my name is put in the same sentence as healing or healer because it doesn't, uh, it, it's uh, not the way that I look at it and I try to really, again, make that distinction because my my clients come in, they're the ones that are doing the magic on the, on the cot and they're the ones that are, are unlocking all of their, their natural healing abilities and doing that themselves. So there's three basic ways that the instrument affects a person and actually before I should before I explain that, I'll tell you a little bit more about the instrument. Um, the, uh, the didgeridoo is an Aboriginal Australian instrument. They're <coughs> estimated to be somewhere between 40 and 80,000 years old. Uh, depending on who's telling what, the Aboriginal tribes that do have the didgeridoo as part of their culture say that and it's kind of the Australian national instrument, but it's not indigenous to the entire continent. Um, it's mostly from the northwest, ter the northern territories, northeast territories of Australia. So anywhere from Arnhem Land, which is uh, Darwin, going east to uh, to Cairns. A little nervous because you're in here. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Chop it in half. Yeah, chop it in half. half. It's the upper, the upper, it's the upper, the upper right quarter. No, right across. Right. Oh, so it's right across. Yeah. So take Australia, chop it in half horizontally, okay. and then up. up. So there were. Um, yeah, and you can find them down there. There's one, yeah. but they got washed out. And they also found a, a collection of, uh, of eucalyptus down in uh, the southwest. Yeah. And there's a, there's a guy down there making digits. Um, the, um, so typically you would hear 40 to 80,000 years. Um, there's some conservative estimates that have come out that say that they're only 2,000 years old. But the, uh, the Aboriginal tribes are the longest continuous culture that have lived on the planet up until um, European Australians showing up. And uh, that dramatically changed the culture. And everything was done through oral tradition. And didgeridoos are made of wood, so they don't really last all that long. They last a couple hundred years, maybe, before they start to decay. So it's really hard to say um, who's right or who's wrong. My, my personal belief is that they're between 40 and 80,000 years old because they're included in multiple Dreamtime stories of creation. Um, the uh, the Aboriginal tribes themselves don't have the same belief system that we do in terms of uh, the relationship with the, the world, and they have a it's a dual existence. There's the the physical world that we're in now, and then there's the dream time. When you go to sleep, that's the dream time. When you pass away, that's the dream time. But when you're in the dream time, the spirit world, the this physical world is the dream time, and it's a it's a fascinating. Um, it's a fascinating concept, and, under, and, and really to me, it's again, it's one of those things that makes a lot of sense when you look at it through a holistic paradigm or even a quantum paradigm. And um, the, the Aboriginal tribes don't even have traditional words for healing or wellness the way that we do. So the idea of using these instruments as a, um, a healing tool, a therapy tool, a meditation tool, it wasn't something that they would directly do that with. It's a very Western concept. And um, it's because of this relationship with the dream time. If you got sick, you got sick in the dream time because someone was casting dream time magic on you. So if you got a cold, if you fell and broke your leg, someone was doing something in the dream time. And that's why, why it manifested itself into the physical world. And again, from a holistic paradigm, that actually makes a lot of sense 
because when you get sick in the physical world, you don't get sick as a re result of um, something going catastrophically wrong just with your physical body. That's, if that were the case, we would all fall down dead within like five, ten years of coming into the, into the planet or into this plane because we're surrounded by things, carcinogens in the air, or just whatever, you know, whatever it is that we're exposed to. But our bodies have this amazing ability to heal constantly and just always going through this healing process. And uh, so their, their concept of the dream time and healing in the dream time and our wellness in the dream time um, more relates to the ideas of holistic. And um, so what I do, again, not an Aboriginal tradition. I've never been to Australia. Uh, I was not taught to play the didgeridoo by Aboriginal tribesmen. And um, what I, the reason why I like to talk about the tribes a little bit in the beginning is just to pay respect to the origin of the instrument um, and kind of point out that what I'm doing is a very westernized approach with a holistic, with a, an eastern holistic feel and a bit of Native American shamanism thrown into it.